agenda of the minutes through the February 4th, 2020 meeting minutes. I make a motion to approve the February 4th, 2020 meeting minutes. Second. Motion and a second to approve the February 4th, 2020 minutes. Any uh, questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. Next is our bills for the general account February 5th through February 25th for $163,719.84. And as of March 3rd, for $60,432.80. I'll make a motion we accept the bills for general account uh, through February 5th to February 25th, $163,719.84. And as of March 3rd today, for $60,432.80. Sign the checks after, and I'll second. All right, we got a motion and a second for the bills. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug. Yes. Tom. Yes. Fritz. Yes. Craig. Yes. <coughs> All right. Just kind of looking at the public comment. If anybody wants to bring anything up to our attention or anything. I want to talk about MS4 now. Is that okay? We're still ahead of that. Yeah, we, yeah, we can go ahead. Okay. Uh, on MS4, I, I, we have these brochures over there. We, you know, if you got a chance on the way out to pick one up, it's kind of a, a roundup of what's going on. Um, we have, uh, and when I say we, I'm talking about everybody here that's been working on this. Uh, we got signs out now for the uh, meeting coming up. Uh, on the 23rd at uh, 6 30 over at the Grange. We have the stuff on the website. Uh, Elois is working on the, the uh, newsletter, which will have MS4 in it. I think this is the third consecutive time, right? That we've had it in there? Oh, I, or more. No, it, it's, it's more now. It's okay, at least the third time in a row that we've had it in there. It's so I think that we've pretty much lived up to our criterion for the, the first two. Uh, you know, the public education and outreach and the public involvement and participation. I don't see what else we could do, you know, as far as that goes. So that part of it we should have taken care of, I think, by now. So <coughs> what's going on? In the paper uh, uh, today, I just had it, and $400,000 for Adams Township that they're putting aside right now. In 2019, they did it, and 2020. But they didn't talk anything about a tax yet, but there's a pretty good article in the paper I think they're leading up to creating a fee schedule because there's just not enough money to continue to do what you need to do without it's you know no funding coming in and just taking it out of taxpayers funds yeah it, it, the uh, if you look at the thing I we passed out not on that we passed out today it was passed out uh, on the, on the second page it kind of comes down to uh, what we put in there that it's uh, uh, it's called the reality of the situation and it basically says that, it, that at this point it, there's, it's either going to be a tax raise or a fee because the township just doesn't have enough money to cover it. So something's got to happen. That's all there is to it. It's not going to not come. It's, right. it's happening. It's here and it's going to stay here. So. Thanks again, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. So that pretty much covered up. Mm -hmm. Any other comments yeah. on MS4? Oh, not on MS4. <coughs> okay. So I had, on Sunday, I had a group of <coughs> kids, the youth from my church, which is New Hope in Economy, that decided they wanted to do a community service project related and surrounding Earth Day. And they asked who they could talk to about Green Valley Park because they wanted to, um, they're going to put together a whole program or they're going to present a do a presentation to the adults and ask for volunteers and go down and clean the park. So clean it up after winter, like trash, just the tree branches that are down, you know, clean the bathrooms, just give the park a, a refresher. But we wanted to make sure that that was okay with everyone before the kids just went down and started the work. It's so more than okay with us. Talk to Greg for that. Yeah. Out there in the market, so yeah. you could talk to them. And they yeah. So they're we're going to go about 
Well, um, they're looking at Sunday, April 19th, because it's right around Earth Day. We'll go down about 1 o'clock, do cleaning, and then I've already talked to Lisa. We're going to use a pavilion sort of as our, you know, meeting point, and then we're going to, you know, have just like lunch and, and food there for anybody that comes down to volunteer. And then I guess the only other question, a couple of the questions they had was just once we do the, the cleanup, are we... Can we put any bags of trash and stuff in the dumpsters, or do we need to do we need to dispose of that ourselves? Still yeah. Dumpster yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, yeah. Some of these branches, pile them in one spot, and we'll have uh, the road department go down and pick them up, and we'll, okay. we'll, we'll just chip them right into a truck at that point. Okay. We'll keep them in an area we can get the truck and uh, chip her down. Okay. 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 <coughs> we'll move on to administration for PR Treasurer's report. Okay, the beginning balance for February is $545,530.94. The income for the month was $329,788. $329,788. The expenses Three hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred seventy-four thousand five hundred seventy-four dollars and ninety-seven cents, <coughs> leaving an ending balance of five forty-eight seven forty-four sixteen. Next, we're going to need to take action to authorize Mark Turnley, CPA, to complete the 2019 Township Audit. Make a motion to authorize Mark Turnley <coughs> to complete the 2019 Township Audit. I'll second. We got a motion and a second for Mark Turnley, <coughs> CPA, to complete the 2019 Township Audit. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Um, yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. <coughs> Next on the agenda is again is a reminder of the MS4 public meeting. It's going to be March 23rd, 6 30 p.m. at the Big Knob Grange. Our engineer will be there, correct? Yes. Okay, appreciate that. Next, we authorize Randy Rose Rhodes to make amendments to ordinance number 206 for the police pension. I'll place that motion before the board. Does. Authorize Randy Rhodes to make amendments to ordinance number 206, the police pension. Second. Okay. A motion in two seconds. Questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. Next on our agenda is accept the resignation of Supervisor Brian Giles, effective 3 3 2020. Make the motion before the board to accept the resignation of Supervisor Brian Giles, effective March 3rd, 2020. Second. Motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Frank? Yes. Anything else on the administration? I, I do have an issue. Uh, my issue, I started it. But um, I actually have. We have a workshop planned on the 17th with the fire department and at the same time as that I didn't notice on the board that it wasn't on there that I have a Democratic Party wanted to use this room for a meeting and I gave him permission and I can't seem to find how to get a hold of them. Chris probably I know. knows them. I know. I have a contact. I have a contact. Okay. It was it was a woman? Yeah. Yeah. Who is she? Um, I don't know if they scheduled it yet. Mitko? No, no, that's kind of... Uh, I have a message. Take, take I, don't, lots of, I don't remember her. Yeah, that's it. Who that's who I have. She's my <laughs> what, do you, do you want me, what do you want me to do? Tell her well, if she has it scheduled, I have a conflict because I have this room booked for both. It's either we move the workshop to somewhere else, or... We can do that in our building wall if you'd like. That, that's sort of what I was hoping somebody would say. Yeah, we can... <laughs> 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 there won't be that many of us that will fit in our meeting room. It'll be just fine. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's here from Pine Run, so I'll have to contact Pine Run and let them know. But uh, that way I can just let them come in here and use this meeting. 
room. It is my fault. I, I put them on the board and forgot about the 17th. All you got to do is ask. All right, we'll schedule a workshop to be at the Big Knob Fire Department, and I'll contact the time run. Just the location? The location. Yeah. Safety. Please accept resignation of part-time officer Donald Dobson. Make a motion to accept the resignation <coughs> of part-time police officer Donald Dobson. I'll second that motion. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug. Yes. Tom. Yes. Fritz. Yes. Greg. Yes. Next request to hire part-time officers. Chairman, I need to advertise for that. Okay. So I'll place a motion before the board uh, for the police department to hire what are you looking for? Part-time officers again. We'll take as many applications that come in at this point. Yeah, we don't anybody for hiring. <laughs> <laughs> Just need the motion to be to be advertised. And for it to be advertised. A second. We have a motion and a second to hire part-time police officers. Questions or comments? Roll call. Doug. Yes. Tom. Yes. Fritz. Yes. Gray. Yes. Next for the police is request to purchase new firearms at a cost of $5,416.80 and that will be coming out of the drug account money. Um, the firearms are not the drug account. Firearms are budgeted by now. Mm. I thought last week we said it was in the. Uh, no, that's not the, the item down further is charter count. Yeah, you know. You said both. You said both last, last time. Week. Yeah, the firearms are were budgeted in the budget month. It, it was budgeted. Yeah, but it's under capital, but I, I don't know. I put on the last agenda that I was coming out of. Drug, but I, I know we did have a budget it's coming out of the major equipment. All right, I'll make the motion to purchase new firearms at a cost of five thousand four hundred sixteen dollars and eighty cents from the what account? Um, major equipment, please. Major, major equipment. Police to purchase new firearms at a cost of $5,416.80. Questions or comments? Yes. Do you buy new firearms? Um, the firearms we have currently now are 6 iron P226s, 40 caliber. We're going to be switching over to a Glock 9. Glock 9 millimeter 45 model. Um, the firearms we currently have now are 13 years old. Um, they were a lot of rounds been thrown through them, so they're at the point of needing rebuilt or purchase new. Um, the prices are comparable to do both, so we're just going to switch to the new ones. What do you do with the old ones? Do you sell them? Um, do you get any money out of them, or do you just We can trade them, them into the uh, company for $275 each, but normally what happens is the, uh, the, the officers are given the opportunity to purchase their firearm that they've carried at a cost what they would cost to trade in. Um, if nobody wants to do that, but you can just trade them in. So what happens to that money if you that came off the bill. What? That came off the bill. Because oh, the bill so was ten thousand eighty nine dollars minus four thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars for the trade ins. So we're getting the old So this is in. this is a net net number then, right? Correct, yes. Right. And that's <coughs> the, and that includes the holsters, the magazines, everything to go with it. No other extra cost for that. Can I ask a question? Yeah. <clears throat> Is there a reason not to use dr the drug account? Sooner or later, the drug account will be exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Can't buy everything. 
maybe you weren't on that or something. Else. No, it was a budget that I know we talked about back in October to uh, put it into the budget, and it is in the budget. That was one of the uh, line items we had. It takes about the firearm could be here 30 days, but the holster thing could be here for five months. So what did they do? Hold on to one they got. Keep we'll keep everything that we have until everything's a complete package. But the holsters is what's going to be. That's why I have it on now because the vendor told me it's going to take you five months to get the holster. Yeah. SARS virus, right? Military. They, they're Safari Lance who makes the holsters and the military. That's a common military weapon also. And you just can't get it. All right, we got a motion and a second. Again, any other questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. Next, request to have Linda Martin design a website for a Chief of Police Association. Um, with that, Chairman, I am currently the president of the Beaver Valley Chiefs of Police Association. We are looking to have our website designed for the organization. Uh, in my meetings with Supervisor Martin, uh, he did advise that his that is his wife's forte. So I did have a meeting with Mrs. Martin. She said she would uh, take on the task. The uh, Chiefs of Police are paying for it. It's nothing that comes out of New Swickley's budget or anything here. Um, but we have a great supervisor, Doug Martin, who is on the board. Uh, so we thought maybe it was a little bit of a conflict we contacted the solicitor. We just want to let you guys know that the Beer Valley Chiefs of Police at their last meeting did approve to hire Mrs. Martin to do that service for them at a set price. I just want to let you guys know. Yeah, I'd say that's more information because we wouldn't have nothing to do with it. I would take Chief action on it just, just so he has a document saying that everybody's aware of it and the covers that you know you agreed that it's not a conflict of interest. I mean, Chief, that's not nothing to do with us, though. It does not, but Mr. Martin is on the Board of Supervisors, and I am the President of the Beer Valley Chiefs of Police. Okay, I, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. It, it doesn't. You're right. It does not have nothing to do with you, but... We don't have to give you permission to have her do it. Just we took on a recommendation yeah. of, of the I, I understand where you're coming from. For transparency. It's well, we're transparency. going to put it on the record, then. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Put it on the record it, that uh, was, it was here. Martin designed a website for mm -hmm. Chief of Police Association. We are aware of it. We have mm -hmm. authorized you to do it, I guess. We don't need to take a vote on that. Sorry, I, I would actually I'd recommend taking a vote. Again, it's it's not it's not because there is a conflict, it's because somebody could say that there's an appearance of a conflict there. Okay. And so again to have the, the, the board with you know with uh with, with Doug abstaining from the vote past that, then that's just a part of the record and that's that just okay. sort of puts the belt right. suspense. Right, I'll place the motion before the board. That we have Linda Martin design a website for the police chief, uh, the chief of police for the Chiefs of Police Association. Excuse me. Not to pick on words here, but you're not having her do anything. Right. Okay. What you said is you approve her right. having her do that. You're, you're not actually doing that. You're just we're just going to place the motion before this board. We're going to yeah, start with no, it's, not, it's not a conflict. Right. You just want to acknowledge that she's I'll, I'll, place the motion, I'll place the motion before the board that we're aware of Linda Martin designing a website for the Chief of Police Association. It is not a conflict of interest to this board, and Doug Martin will abstain from a vote. Well said. I agree. Second. second. All right, we've got a motion and a second on all that. Everybody <coughs> understand? Any questions or comments? Roll call. No. Because this is a family Same. member, I must abstain and I'll submit this to the secretary. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your help. Sure. <laughs> All right, next, request to purchase a server for digital video at a cost of $16,645, and that will be coming out of the drug account. <coughs> you want a motion? All right, I'll make a motion that, um, that we uh, request the purchase of a digital server, video digital server, at a cost of sixteen thousand six hundred and forty-five 
dollars, which will come out of the drug account money. I'll second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. To purchase a server for the digital video. Cost $16,645 to come out of the drug account. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. All right, the police request a workshop in the future. Got any dates in mind? We have a normal workshop day would be uh, if my eyes were any better I'd be able to read that but it's the first Tuesday in April right? The 7th. That would be our agenda meeting right? No that's our board of supervisors. Oh that's right. It would be the 14th. 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 Yeah it'd be second Tuesday. You mean right. before? Before the meeting? Something's <coughs> on there. Be What's on there? The 14th? There's nothing on the 14th. Nothing on the 14th. Okay. I can't see it from here, so I'm not that <laughs> right. Where's the 13th? It's the 7th is the Board of Supervisors. So the next? The 14th. 13th. Well, there's the 14th. Yeah, the next is the 14th is the second Tuesday of the month. Is that okay? That's fine with me. 630, all right? Mm -hmm. February 2020, there were 22 motor vehicle accidents, <coughs> there were 17 criminal arrests made, there was 227 calls for services, there was 58 citations issued, 27 field interviews, 83 criminal incidents investigated, and 53 pieces of property either came in or out of the property. Thank you. Appreciate it. So everybody, thank you. Be safe. Thank you. All right, move on to our fire department's monthly reports. The month of February, uh, big uh, 29 calls total, four fire, 18 rescue EMS, one good intent, five false alarms, and one special incident. Thanks, PJ. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Anybody from Pine Run? And again, our fire department's uh, workshop will be <coughs> March 17th, and it will be at the uh, fire department on 6.30, Big Dog Fire Department. Thanks, guys. All right, road department, RJ. Uh, in the month of February, the road department uh, chip trees on Spade Road, bash poles, plowed Nash roads. Clean and maintenance of trucks, remodeled the lunchroom, made it great again. <laughs> Placed all the lights with LED lights in the uh, in the whole road department. We're all LED now. Uh, took several loads of chips to the waste management of the county. Cleared a slot on Park Quarry Road. Worked on police cars. Changed oil. Did some uh, wiring. Or did some stuff for a spike here. Jeez, sorry. Worked on the heaters in the <laughs> police department. They got one going. The other one they deemed is. It's John. So, uh, attended a grant meeting and also met with Maria Dries on uh, dirt and gravel road studies on Powell Road and Park Quarry. And uh, next, I have the mower head on the John Deere. We've been getting prices on repairing or replacing. It's six thousand dollars to repair and twelve thousand four ninety to replace. Uh, feel Walt and Tom and I feel that it makes more sense to replace it than repair it. Uh, yeah, boom or it. yeah, just a head. We've already re replaced parts on it several times. It's getting metal fatigue. We've welded on it. We're just thinking, you know, it's 40 to 60 days out to get one. So, I mean, spring's around the corner. We need to do something. Uh, I. I don't I mean, we tried every option to look at it and it just it's just not repairable. You I mean you put it in there and free open the yeah. <coughs> yeah. The tractor itself is in great shape. The arms patched up the, the arms will be patched up on every tractor I've ever seen that does what because it hangs out so far. So uh, I don't know if that's you have to make it I just it's it's beyond my purchasing power. It's beyond something that we actually budgeted for the year. Is that it? 
Yeah, I have it right here. I'm sorry, I had the first page. Is it the same That's thing as what you got? It's an Alamo head, yeah. The new, just the mower head. It's just a head. Alamo actually bought Tagger and Diamond and all the rest of them at this point. So uh, we're going to go with a 48 uh, flail instead of a 60 amp to try to take a little stress off the end and go with a different design. Uh, they say it's better on the drum. We replaced the drum on this already. and We'd have to replace everything again. They they come up with a new design. So that's what we're leaning towards. So which one is it on here? Frail? The, the 48. 48 uh, frail. Yeah. Axe cutting head with fixed center door. On its little verse over. There's so many. Yeah, it's a, the quote's on the first one. Oh, okay. Right there. $12,890. They said they would uh, get rid of the $400 shipping for us. I tried to call up today again, tried to squeeze them on the price, and they said it's a call price and they wouldn't do any better, but they would do away with the shipping with $400, so it's twelve four nine. <coughs> try to make anybody else to deal with it? Walt looked. Uh, I was on a couple different sites trying to find it. Um, it's that's called a, Sig Worth. That's, that's a co-star pricing from. on it. Not that they're always the best, but right, I can't right. find I can't find anybody else to buy it cheaper. You did go up to um, Sig Worth and their price was higher and uh, actually this this was the better price. Trying to repair it, it's, it's beyond repair. It's it's actually the whole drum is bent and it'll always wobble and, and it'll just start tearing itself apart again. Yeah, I wish we could too, uh, and I, I couldn't find anything else. Well, look, I they I called. Look I the called. Only, the only reason I was bringing it up I, yeah, because it's be. forty to sixty days out. I mean, if, if we can find a better price, I, I would just like to have the ability to buy it because Walt said he doesn't want to okay. make that decision. I mean we can we can chop around. It's not what we had in the budget for uh -huh. the year, but we try to think think we were actually we have to be able to repair it, but it's it's not repairable. It's I placed a motion before the board <coughs> the department to purchase a new frail mower <coughs> not to exceed twelve thousand four ninety twenty four. See if you can find it cheaper. Okay. Second. Is this an important piece of equipment? Yeah, yeah, we very use it. Uh, yeah. It's very important. Once the grass starts to grow and you can't see around the bends <coughs> and on the edge of the road, it mows everything up and it can reach way up and mow back so you can see around the bends from the intersections. Um, we mow all the roads. So it's a big one. Try one for three months. Can you try one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can bend these guys. <laughs> yeah, we well, got a motion. <laughs> 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 let try. We got a motion in a second. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Doug. Yes. Tom. Yes. Spritz. Yes. Greg. Yes. Uh, last, <coughs> I, I gave you guys all a list of the prices on the pipe for the part. I gave that to uh, Larson as well. Just something to think about. We have to put a, an order in for COG. Um, we don't have the new pricing of the pipe. That's the pricing we have right now that he, you worked off of. The new prices once we put in the bid for it. But um, that's just a start of the program that we really don't have money set aside to do for that stormwater project. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to Kevin a little bit at the end just to make sure that I'm right. Yeah, I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty. That's that's just the pipe and the catch basin not counting the stone and actually we should have a machine not a backhoe down in there we should have something on tracks to go and do that work um, we do have a saw we can cut the sidewalk because we have to go through that sidewalk there's still asphalt involved with that when it goes down so it's a big expense and that's just the beginning of it and um, uh, I mean they went out and surveyed it all out laid it out what we need to do we need at least got to get the first pipe in from the stream up to the lower part where the uh, amphitheater is going to get that in and we're going to have to phase this in well, where's the money going to come from is my question you know I don't, I don't know where we're going to pull all this money from to do this okay. all right, any else, 
That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. All right, we're going to move on to our engineer. We've got the and municipal officials. Yeah. Everybody could sign in, please. Uh, this evening, uh, good evening, Bo. Good evening. This evening, we're going to do your MS4 training. Uh, I know you have it on your monthly agenda, which is great. Um, one of the requirements is uh, every year, uh, municipal officials uh, who train uh, at a public meeting. Um, we try to do that in the spring uh, because uh, you will over the next few years uh, have an audit um, from DEP again. Um, we've had three communities since we last met have their audit already. They're calling, they're given about a week of notice and then um, the two weeks and then they come out and they do a review of uh, municipalities uh, paperwork. Um, they get a look at public works facilities, um, make sure everything's clean and operating the way it should be, no oil laying around, stuff like we've that. We've been through the preliminary on that once and uh, she did write a report two years later. We just finally got it. That's right. You just got yours. Yeah. Um, they are running on about the same schedule. Um, nobody's been done early. Um, the part of that requirement is this training. So this evening, I'm going to take about five minutes and run through what the current requirements are for the uh, township. <coughs> um, as you know, you, you do have a separate stormwater permit, MS4 permit, as it's referred to. Um, the current uh, permit cycle started in 2018. Um, only a portion of the township currently is in the MS4 uh, permit. It's uh, determined by the urbanized area. Only a small portion of the township is currently in the urbanized area. As you grow, uh, areas get added in every 10 years when they do the census. Um, uh, your surrounding communities are similar, um, probably a half or a quarter of some of the other townships, even uh, Pine Township uh, alongside Cranberry. Um, they're probably only about 60% urbanized uh, as of 10 years ago. The next cycle, uh, I'm sure they're going to be another 15-20%. Um, so over time, you will increase the amount of area, which means it increases the amount of requirements that you have. On page two, um, a general overview um, of the permit and the requirements. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the page, uh, one of the uh, questions I get all the time is, when did this start and why do I got to do it? Um, it started back in 1972 um, when the Clean Water Act was passed. Um, the Clean Water Act itself, a lot of the things that was in the uh, Act in 72 were now just being implemented in 2020. Um, 1990, um, they did what was called Phase 1. That was for communities of population greater than 250,000 or a medium, popula medium population of 100,000. 2003 that's when everybody else got brought into the permit cycle and that's when you probably got your first permit that permit was supposed to last five years it actually lasted um, nine years and then in 2013 the second permit got issued and in 2018 the third permit got issued which is a current permit you're under as you recall in 2018 you had to do what they call a pollution reduction plan. That was a big change for that permit. Um, and then your current permit cycle will end in 2023. Uh, what's different about this third permit is the third permit cycle, you actually have to build things. There is construction required to do BMPs. That's what the pollution reduction plan was for sediment removal. Um, from the beginning, in the bottom of page three, um, Get it, uh, address the six minimum control measures. Um, as was indicated tonight, the first two are public education, public involvement. Um, we've done a really good job at that um, over the years. Your paperwork's always been in good order. The third one is uh, the illicit discharge detection and elimination. That's where you test your outfalls. Um, the fourth one is construction site, stormwater runoff. That's your ordinances along with post-construction runoff, new and redevelopment activities. And then number six is the pollution prevention, good housekeeping. And this year when we come out and do your audit, we're going to look at that. That's supposed to be a written plan on how RJ and Public Works does their business. Um, make sure if you have fueling areas, things like that, that they're all in order. So we will get through that. Um, we do like a little mini audit um, with the communities. And we get through the same checklist that DP has to make sure that when they come out and do the review, that all those things are <coughs> Next on page four, um, it gives a description on uh, page four for 
MCM 1 through 4. I'm not going to read those to you. Feel free to read that this evening when you wish. Uh, same at the top of uh, page 9 is MCM number 5 and 6. And then the pollution control measures. Um, one of the items with this permit was they had appendix A, B, and C. Um, all the communities were required to just report and map where you had any metals, which is A and B, pathogens, or organic compounds, PCB. A and B are the two that um, a lot of the communities uh, uh, have, have had a number of areas added, which is if you have uh, acid mine drainage coming out anywhere, or if you have fouling septic systems. So um, you could have some areas by the time we're done in 23, we have some areas indicated that there's pathogens in the um, testing or uh, Appendix A that we have um, uh, A and D, if there's areas uh, from past mining activities. Um, PCBs, unless you had an existing industrial facility like along the rivers, um, some of those outfalls, uh, you can get the positive tests that they could have had PCBs. And what that is basically, if there's an industrial facility, we noted on the map, and then uh, we believe the next permit cycle, we'll have to do research to find out what was there and if there's a chance that they would have had uh, PCBs on the area. Um, the Ohio River has a um, reduction for PCBs on it. It has a uh, TMDL, so, or will have a TMDL in the future. Um, uh, the dates for the uh, other I items on the permit are listed there. Um, one of the things is every year now, we have to do an annual report. The last permit cycle was every other year. Currently, it is every year. Along with that, they gave another gift that was a $500 fee. Uh, it used to be one-time fee of $500 every five years. Now it's $500 per year. Um, your requirements for the pollution reduction plan is 10% for sediment and 5% for um, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus. If you get the sediment reduction, you automatically get the other two. Um, again, it has to be completed by 2023. Um, went over the annual reports, DP inspections. Um, one of the items they look at is all your paperwork. Um, we come up last year, we went through everything. Everything was in order. We're going to do that again here over the next month or so. And uh, again, do a little mini audit and make sure that everything's in order because we are not exactly sure when they're going to come out. The other question we get asked often is why do we got to do this because um, nobody's been fine in this area. Um, Eastern half you know, of the state, um, there has been folks fine. Um, we have had that discussion uh, with DP a few times. Um, they actually offered it up this time that if they come out and do um, the inspection in this cycle and the community uh, isn't checking all the boxes, they're going back in 30 days. If they haven't checked all the boxes, then they're going to do a notice of violation, which could come with fines. And if the community doesn't uh, get their stuff in order, then it's going to be uh, probably a consent order as most of the activities the DP does. So um, different than before when it was more of an educational process. The first audits that were done, uh, like Walt indicated, it took you two years to get the report back. This permit cycle so far, um, we've had to report either the day of the inspection or the ne next day. So um, we're not exactly sure what changed inside the department, but things are coming out much faster. Um, one, they have a, a small list of a few items. Uh, none of the clients yet have had any findings. There were some suggestions is all they had for the one. Um, and it was around their fueling facility. They had multiple. So they had more than one. And, uh, there's always things there, signage and stuff they look for. Um, so we'll check that and make sure since there are any comments that they make to our other communities, uh, every couple months we put a list out to all the communities and say, here's here's what we've heard from the review. They came, they came in last time and said about putting spill kits out by the fuel stations, which we did. Mm -hmm. As soon as they left, we put spill buckets out there that have the stuff to clean up and clean how to do that. But I, I don't know if it, you know, if there's more to that now, you know, they that's like the thing she actually found. They went phone numbers, there's a sign they went now. Sometimes if you have fueling for your police, for instance, or fire, do. They'll, they'll ask, uh, they'll, if they, they time it right, they'll ask police officer. What happened? We're going to ask them what happens whenever you're fueling, if you overfill and there's a spill. A few of the municipalities have done that. The police officer said, I let, R, you know, it's RJ, I let RJ know. Yeah, I mean, the road, road department comes over and cleans up. 
and that's not the answer they're looking for. They're looking for the, the police have had training, they put the kitty litter down and clean it up. So <coughs> the answer has mostly been, like, you know, we let the public works know and they clean it up. So nope. they, they want that kind of training. Nobody's so. been able to do any uh, checking of this drain pipes because they haven't been dry for the last two years. You know, our crossing. 48 is, hours is tough. Yeah, we haven't had a chance to get out there. You know, if it's frozen, you can't do it. And then it's just been raining. Uh, and I don't know how they how they going to enforce that when you can't get out to even test it because it hasn't been dry yeah, for 48 was, hours. It was rough last year getting them all done. So, um, but that's something to look for. So, and, uh, you do have to look forward to over the next few years. Um, next is the stormwater food. I'm going right into that. Um, do have a presentation uh, on the 23rd. Um, we're still working through the numbers. Um, yours is the reverse, kind of the most of them. We have a lot of roll parcels. We're trying to, in the calculation, balance that out with the uh, standard residential lots. Um, so we're going to come up and meet with Walt next week and run through the numbers and the budget with him. And then we'll put out a draft um, right after that to the board. Um, the presentation, uh, Sean Wingrove from my office is actually coming to it. Um, he does all these presentations for the stormwater piece uh, for the firm, and he'll, uh, uh, he'll PowerPoint presentation. Uh, he'll go through, it takes maybe half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, he'll answer any questions. Uh, we kind of have this as a back and forth with the community, whoever's there, with the board to answer anybody's questions. And then after you take those questions, uh, we'll have a sample ordinance that we'll send out. Uh, we'll get Chris to review it beforehand. And then after you consider the residents' comments, um, then you can put it on a future agenda. So this is a public meeting for that question and answer is, is what it is. And um, typically, Sean will have something prepared that either if Walt wants to uh, open it or if you want to open the meeting, um, something just to describe what the process is and why. Kind of the history, you know, kind of like the first slide here. Why do people need a stormwater fee? And what's in the presentation itself will really prove what the difference is between a fee and a tax, and why a fee uh, we have uh, found in, in all of the municipalities is equitable uh, versus a, a tax because not everybody pays taxes. Where a stormwater fee is the same as a sanitary bill or a water bill or electric bill. If you have electric, you know, everybody pays for it. So. Um, and don't run through that, what a stormwater fee means. Great. By all means, ask him any questions um, that evening, um, and he'll be able to address them. And then uh, at a future meeting, then, uh, when you feel fit, or want to move forward, uh, the ordinance will be ready to go. Um, the ordinance is pretty standard. Uh, one of the things that we'll go over with Walt is uh, things like credits, how people would get credit um, for doing a BMP, how existing facilities get credits. Um, if somebody pays their bill early, do they get a percent reduction uh, like they do under taxes? Um, things like that. There's some mechanics of it. And uh, you go seamless action whenever you, you do the billing. Um, it's still in the same range we talked. Um, it's it's going to be somewhere between six and eight bucks a month uh, you know, per resident. Again, you're like their inverse. So the reason uh, I don't have something tonight to show you is uh, you have so, so many large parcels. Um, and we're making a determination on who is. Uh, would be a commercial uh, operation versus who's a family farm who don't have any parking lots or anything like that. Um, and you've got a boatload, which I'm sure you know, know of well bats. And uh, those are commercial. So there can be a bill come for every one of those driveways that are stone. Um, so we're working through that. You'll have a table and you'll be able to see and, and say what that says um, and what that number is. So, um, and that's one of the things. Uh, again, none of the other people had that. So you actually have commercial here that nobody else has because you have so many well pads and you have compressor stations, things like that. Well, they're all permits. So um, those folks are going to be a pretty sizable build. So um, that'll, I'm sure, pass on to their uh, leaseholders. There's 12 well pads here in the township, uh, 13 permitted. The one who wasn't built so far. 14, yeah. actually, another one we're working on. So that's like 12, 12 commercial businesses at that point, so, that's um, which isn't a bad thing. That's a good thing for your residents um, uh, as far as, uh, again, they pay their, their share because it is creating runoff and so forth. So, um, so that'll be coming out. Sean, again, will be ready for that. Um, the last one is update on the road department garage. We got the survey done. 
um, which starts in next Thursday um, for the four corners. And we're coordinating with RJ then to get the test pits dug on those corners. As soon as we determine that, um, we'll have a couple options for the building. Um, it's either uh, thinking going to be steel frame or wood frame with block four foot up. Um, uh, just because looking at the area and the size of the building, I think we're going to find there is fill on some of it, and uh, that building will be more flexible than all block, um, which I think we want. We want it to be flexible. Um, so next month I'll have um, the pricing, the ad, and uh, the design for the building as far as schematic. Um, and then we can put the project out for bid uh, probably within 60 days after that so you can open bids to buy it. You can have a cost estimate at that time yep. prior, to, prior to putting out the bid? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll have an estimate for you with the board. No, for the show and then the rest of it. Met, met with the SEO today and we walked over to site and um, trying to figure out the best possible place to put in a septic. And it sounds like we're going to run with, end up with a tank unless we decide to go with a stream discharge because there's a blue line stream. But I think the cost effective wise for the way the building's going to use eight hours out of the weekday, not mm -hmm. necessarily there all the time, I think he's looking at that process to try to keep it down price wise. That'd be great. And a well. We doused back there in the past with Crichton, and he found a spot by the other secondary storage building over there that you may be able to put a well in instead of carrying off the existing water, which we're restricted between this building and that building already. We may be able to just put a well in <coughs> into that building. So, okay. next month, I have a presentation for you. And that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, our solicitor. Yes, uh, I uh, completed a, a, a draft of the uh, request for a proposal for the, the pension plan, and Walt and Chris and I are going to get together here as soon as we can to go over that and get that ready. Uh, you know, one of the questions is just with the market being funky right now, um, <coughs> I, I think Walt's idea was let's get it all ready to go out, and then we'll, we'll see if there's <coughs> any go right away or it feels like it's better to wait a little while. I, I, I'm, I'm working on uh, with, with Kevin and Walt on some uh, agreements for uh, work for ETC and that's coming along and we'll hopefully have something for your approval. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Excuse me, sir. Do we, do any, do we progress any on the school building? Or sending him a notice, and that's what we talked about last night. I talked to actually uh, uh, the administrator and told him that you know the process is going to start here. I uh, sent an email out to our code girl, but uh, we have not visited the building. I want to show her what it's like, at least what you've seen from the outside. Yes. And uh, I, I want to get her involved with Chris at that point, but that has not happened yet, other than. Do you have a schedule for when that will happen? No, I don't. I, uh, she comes back out here. Yeah, she was out. She was out to happen to be. As a matter of fact, I think we have a report. She was just out this way, and she visited other ones. When she comes back out, we were going to go over, but I don't have a date yet. Yeah, if we can get the whole rolling on that, the sooner the better. Yeah. And just to okay. say, just one thing, what Chris was working on this this book is the police <coughs> pension. It's not simple. It's 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 a book. Okay, thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Sure. All right, moving on to our planning, zoning, sanitation, rec board, and grant committee. First up is the planning commission annual report. And again, it's a book. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate all you do. That's a lot of a lot of work you got to do. I know I appreciate it. So, couldn't do a lot of stuff that goes on in this township without the planning commission. So. Again, I'd like to say thanks to all the members of your board and everything you got to do. It's a lot of work. You're it shows you, Mike, for doing this report. <laughs> it's nice to have time. Huh? <laughs> so you'll it's have a copy of the report. I uh, appreciate that. I'd just like to say thank you also, Mike and Al, Dan, and everybody else.
House on the Planning Commission. I, I know what you guys do, and you're the uh, <coughs> a backbone of this township, without a doubt, what you produce is, uh, in my opinion, much more than, than anywhere else I've heard out of life. Uh, firsthand, and that's the way it is. But thank you for jogging down and I sure do a lot of work. You're welcome. For sure. All right, next on is when. We'll take a raise. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Yeah. All right, next is uh, reapprove the John Graham plan of lots. The 90 day time period has expired, so it's just a re reapproval. <coughs> Place that motion before the board to reapprove the John Graham plan of lots. A second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments? Roll call. Doug? Yes. Tom? Yes. Fritz? Yes. Greg? Yes. Anything else now from the planning commission? Mm -hmm. Um, no. Okay, thank you very Good much. Day. Next, we'll move on to the recreation. Rec board. Okay. Um, so the posts have been ordered, and for the amphitheater, they we were told they would take three months. They're the contractor has a new supplier and it seems that they're going to take five or six weeks <coughs> so um, we're, we're a few weeks into that yeah order being placed so um, so that's exciting news as we talked about we are going to continue our fundraising efforts so our next fundraiser is April 25th Saturday night April 25th we're doing a, a wing bash night at Roberts Roadside Inn it's uh, twenty-five dollars a person from six to eight. All you can eat. There'll be a buffet, wings, um, pasta, fries, you know, and then uh, beer and soda are included. We'll have Chinese auctions and um, a fifty-fifty raffle also. And then um, the zero turn. <laughs> or yeah. the, the zero turn apparently there's it's got some starter problems that has to be jumped most of the time start it with a screwdriver or whatever so, so could, if that could be looked at maybe before yeah, we have to go over all the motors yeah. prior to the season starting anyway that's one thing that I know that might let me know I think they the Kabuda one yeah and I think they already looked at it last yeah. fall when they, I think okay. Paul, Paul did something um, yeah Okay. There was talk that they were going to maybe update that, the whole mower, and that didn't happen, so we'll just take care of it in the spring. Okay, great. Um, the other thing that um, we, community day plans are moving forward, and um, community day is not designed to be, you know, a, a money-making event, but we did raise the, the cost of the, um, the spaces this year. They haven't changed in a million years, and they were $25. We raised it to $35. Um, not a huge raise, still way under, if you look around at other community events, extremely under what you pay. And that's for a 10 foot, foot space. So if somebody has 20 feet or 30 feet, they're going to pay that fee three times. Um, and we also voted to start charging for electric which we've never done in the past it's just a flat you want electric to your booth it's ten dollars I know it's not a huge amount of money but it's going to help offset the electric that we use for the event um, so there'll be a little increase in vendors this year with between the electric and the and the fee um, it's not going to deter anyone from coming it's not going to you know make enough money to pay for all this pipe but, <laughs> but <laughs> it's something um, and like I said we'll continue with our our fundraising efforts we have tickets tickets are here um, Elois has some back here you can get them off of any rec board member and um, should be a fun night <coughs> Kids come down and clean it up. Yeah, that's going to be great. <laughs> we will we'll, we'll make sure that somebody's there to meet them so that they yeah. can use the rakes and the equipment from the garage. Um, so they don't have to drag. All right, we'll move on to zoning building monthly reports. You all should have copies of your 
code enforcement report. Katie Griffith. It just came in today, actually. And we uh, hit, hit him on time. Building permit. Recycling grant also that's coming up for this one. We're putting in for three hundred fifty thousand dollars for recycling grant. And we got good news on the grant that we just did that uh, DEP is working with us to help us max out that grant. There's another eleven thousand dollars coming back on that one that we didn't think we were going to be able to work with. So that's that's working out hopefully. No. Yes. I'd like to. Uh, Give a shout out or commendation to RJ and his workers. They completely restored or refurbished the garage over here. Uh, it's nice to see you guys take pride in where you work. And, uh, I saw it. And it was wonderful. You did a great job. Thank you. Feels like home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other board comments? I have a couple. Okay. The intersection of uh, Lovi and Blank Road. It's going to be a study done. Um, Chief, you got involved and sent a letter to PennDOT. Correct. And he asked for some time. You can believe that. Um, they're going to do a traffic study there or, or a safety study more than a traffic study and see if there's anything that can be done to improve the safety at that intersection. It may take a couple of months since we're going to go in here. And the other thing for the board, we have to set a date of April 23rd for road inspection at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Kevin, you're gonna be free that day. Can you can somebody be free that day? Yeah. I'll be good. Okay. All right, anything else guys? Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion a second. Uh -huh.